Welcome to Crappie Hippies at the Bench, an instructional video series on how to tie your own jigs, flies, and create your own fish catching baits. Brought to you by Glasswater Angling for a Better Outdoors, makers of lead free fishing tackle, inventors of Angle King, the Crappie Dooler, and home to hand tied jester jigs, Ring King Paddle Tail Grubs, lead free jig heads, and more. Check us out at glasswaterangling.com and now here's crappie hippie at the bench hi everybody this is crappie hippie your tree hugging redneck from eastern kansas and man am i glad to be back here in front of the camera i have been gone too long and thanks to everybody for your kind comments and your gentle urgings to get back in front of this camera and make us some more jig tying videos i appreciate the compliments i appreciate you hanging with me but Let's not talk about that right now. If you want to know what I've been doing and where I've been, we'll put that at the end. Let's get going on a crappie pattern that I have just learned and can't wait to try uh, more extensively. It's called a bead body jig. And here's one right here. Um, hold it where it'll come into focus. You know, these little cameras can be kind of tricky. But uh, anyway, what we're doing here is we're making a regular jig, but we're putting a nice plastic color bead right in here not only for a color highlight and a contrast blast right there on the jig but these float so for your springtime crappie fishing especially when you want a jig with a little slower drop but you still want to maintain the proper size you know yeah you could you want a slower drop i'll just fish with a 30 second or something well but maybe you want this juicy big eighth ounce size so Instead of tying a whole bunch of material to a small jig, what you can do is put uh, something buoyant on there, and in this case, this uh, plastic bead, and that'll help it to drop a little slower. So here we go. Easy to make, fun to make. First thing you're going to need are some of these, which they call crow beads. I just call them kitty beads. Uh, you can get these at Walmart. You can get them at tons and tons of places. Anywhere they sell arts and crafts, you can get them at, on Etsy, on eBay. Uh, there's all kinds of places to get these. They're, they're cheap. They're fun, and if you have kids, you probably already have some of these somewhere around the house. Now, the problem with my collection that I inherited from my baby daughter, who has now grown up and, and moved away and left me with this big old empty nest, is there's no black in here. Make sure you look for combinations that have black, that have brown, that have white, that have some of the colors that are more popular for jig tying. However, there's some beauties in here. we got a beautiful fluorescent yellow. We've got a nice greenish you know edging towards chartreuse but a nice green in there of course we have orange which is fantastic blue and of course pink which is also fantastic so we got them you know and there's some purple even mixed in there and we're gonna have a lot of fun those are all good colors that we can use as crappie fishers bass fishers pond fishers lake fishers what have you okay so easy breezy cheesy it's all there we just need to do it so we're gonna take an eighth ounce head and yeah you can tie these on a smaller head this is a I think this is a six millimeter or maybe even a eight or nine millimeter bead. Yeah, I think this is an eight or nine millimeter. This is a big bead and it has a big hole in it. The hole is like three, three or four millimeters. And we're going to talk about hole size and, and, and what we do to get the, the bead on the hook and all that here in a minute uh, because you got to consider that as you get to playing with these and getting more involved with these you've got there's two things you got to consider is the hole big enough to go over your hook barb and is it a big enough to turn around the bend and come up here without having to drill it out or go to that kind of trouble okay so usual start we just take oh wait a minute I'm wondering why i can't see nothing I need my goggles of power wow that is so much better being able to see what you're doing i don't know i highly recommend it all right, classic start, right? We're trapping that tag end. Trap it, trap it, trap it. Up, all the way up to that hook point. Okay, and back. All right, and we're going to, oops, and we're going to, we don't need that tag end on this tie. We're going to get rid of it. And what we do now is we're just going to take a little piece of chenille and we're going to put on there. Uh, the reason we're going to do this is to give that bead a little something something so it doesn't move around quite so much now you see your bead okay and let's see you know it's only about well you can't see that let me see if i there now you can see about how much chenille i need well shouldn't you be color matching your chenille well yes and no um 
I don't know what I'm going to do with this head just yet. I'm just trying to get some heads ahead. Uh, so <laughs> so I, I'm just going to do this in white or gray or some other color and not worry about it too much. Now, you don't want to get so much chenille on here that you make it so you can't slide that bead up here. So take it easy, but it's the same rules. Pull it tight, pull it tight, pull it tight. Then take your just two wraps, two turns with that thread, and there you go. And you got your piece of chenille on there. And we're going to cut that off. All right. These scissors look fancy, but they're really garbage, and they're, you know, I got them for free. Uh, they need a good sharpening. They might be a little better. And, oh, boy, I'm getting so excited. I'm way ahead of myself. I have not put the whip finish. You put whip finish on here. And then you can even put some insurance glue in there if you want. I'm not going to. I think that whip finish with those five turns will just be all I need to keep that piece of chenille on there because we're going to come back in and we're going to we're going to back this whole thing up. And so right now, I could just take this and hang this up just like this. And I can make up a bunch of these, you see. And uh, But let's just say here, uh, classic vanilla, classic white with some green in it. A little vanilla lime freeze, so see. Let me put that on there. Looks just like that. Uh, oh, dang it. I just changed my mind. I'm going with the white boy blues kind of a blue and white pattern which is a fantastic pattern boom so anyway ah to heck with it until i make up my mind i am going to just hang that over here on my string and i keep a piece of string strung where i can hang heads that are wet or i can hang things that are half done or i can hang things after they're done and let them dry or whatever but i keep my handy clothesline jig line lure line hanging over here uh, where I can hang stuff up. Okay, now when we're looking at this, see, look at the size hole on that. That's the reason we got to do that chenille trick. Uh, like I say, that's three, four millimeter hole. Uh, to get around a hook uh, bend and point on an eighth ounce jig, you're going to need at least a two millimeter hole. Okay, uh, we're going to get into, we're going to talk about another thing, like we can get into wood beads, and you can see that that's got a hole that's not near as big, but it's big enough. So that's about a two millimeter hole, and that's gonna go right on there. So if you got some wood beads laying around, and wood, of course, is way more buoyant than, um, than your plastic. So when you get it on there, maybe you can't get it off again, huh? No, you can, I got it. it takes a little patience. All right, so now I wanna tie one for real. I showed you, where did I put him? I showed you that one with the purple and um, right here. So we may, I you know me, I love these bluegill patterns. I love these, I fish a lot of ponds. And, but wherever you find crappie, even in a reservoir where they eat a lot of shad or even in a lake where they're eating a lot of shiners and whatnot, you're still gonna want these bluegill patterns. So I had some of these plum colored heads laying around and I shot a little orange in there and then shot more purple in there and uh, made a purpley looking bluegill. And now I want to make these good old D.H. Thompson vices. They're economical, but they're not quite as maintenance free. These are more expensive ones, but my golly, they work just fine. So we're gonna stick this little fella right in there. We'll stick this nice eighth ounce jig. Now, yeah, you can tie these on smaller. You can get these beads uh, down to tiny, tiny, you know, little beads uh, for making fancier stuff and all that. However, this is why I say you got to keep in mind how big is that hole. So if you want to do some 32nd ounce, you probably don't want this big, huge um, uh, bead, but maybe you do. Maybe you want it to just drop so slow, you know, play around, experiment around, fool around. But do remember that if you get that hole too small, you're either going to have to melt it out, drill it out, or just give it to your kid because it, it you know, going to have a hard time going around. And even if you smash the barb to allow it to go over the barb, you still got to, you still got to have it. If it's too big around and the hole is too small, it won't navigate around that, that bend. Uh, if, you know, it, it's all math and, and, and geometry and, and trigonometry and a lot of metry, uh, which is not my bag. 
Uh, I know there's you guys out there, there's some smart people that are like, well, it's going around a curve and this and that and the other thing. So uh, more power to you, but that's out of my zone. All right. <laughs> All right, so let's do this to it. I, You know me. You could tie with just gray or black or white or whatever. I have friends that tie with nothing but black. One of them, Jig Tire on um, one of my groups, she ties with nothing but gray. I think that's wise, but I'm a color matcher. I'm a color matcher. Whoops. And so I would tie with orange, except that I'm not going to use an orange bead, so I, I can't really be that big a color matcher because I'm going to use a purple bead on here and I don't have purple thread so I'm going to go with darker okay now this is not my idea this is not my idea um, I met a guy uh, named Marvin Jonasy on original hand tied crappie jigs Facebook group and he has this jig company called Swamp Monster down there in Louisiana and he ties these jigs. Also, bead body jigs are hugely popular with people that fish for trout, especially steelhead. And you'll see guys that'll get one, two, even three uh, beads on a hook. And, you know, they're generally using that row color red. Um, uh, anyway, that's another group of fishers that likes to do bead bodies and do some that are entirely beads. I've, I've done some where I've added you know, made an entire body of beads. It's a little more tricky. I'm not sure how much more effective that is. But my deal is let's just start simple with this concept right here. And then we will branch out as we go. All right, so we're in we go. Now, you know, I could, I'm going to finish this with orange chenille here. Um, but I'm going to have purple up here underneath the purple bead. Because so I'm going to do have orange. I'm going to have that little purple gill spot tie the rest of the body in orange and then I'm gonna so it you know my idea is the pattern is a bluegill male with a lot of orange in him and his big purple proud purple gill spot and um, that's my idea on the pattern so I'm gonna do purple chenille real quick up in here okay and just one turn, overlapping slightly, tugging, tugging, tug it down. Okay, make sure it's going to stay. And then we take two turns. And see that black doesn't show up at all. Uh, if you got purple thread, go for it. But do not get so hung up on thread color that you don't tie or you're getting fussy and aggravated with everybody because, you know, you're one of those people that you know really likes things to match and I understand that impulse completely but let's be realistic we can get a jig together with whatever we got and go out and have a ball catching crappie and uh, we don't have to worry about it too much you know we can have a video where we talk about fine-tuning patterns and how yeah sometimes having a little streak of this or a little streak of that means you catch a few more crappie than the guy next to you but generally everybody's going to get their share if they just have a good well-constructed jig that doesn't give out on them okay so i made my my finish my knot i'm gonna put another one on there just to make sure there just like that i'm gonna set you down get it out of sight and snip her off okay so now snip that off and now complete my concept I'm gonna come over here and get me a purple one and I'm gonna throw that on there just like that okay so now there we go we got we got mr. orangey bluegill there's there's that purple in there to designate that gill spot and we're gonna now I'm gonna grab my orange thread and I'm gonna come in here and do my same thing. I'm gonna go down to the hook point. Okay, and I'm gonna come back up. And we're gonna start tying in the boo. Now, I'm gonna, you know, I'm not going to assume people have seen all the other videos. So for those of you that have seen all the other videos, you're like, crappie hippie, do you have to tell us the same stuff every time? Well, kind of, just in case you're one of the first people to watch. So the thing of it is we generally you know we're tying upside down so this when we go to fish 
under here is going to be the top of the jig. It's going to, you know, flip it over. So fish are generally dark on the top, lighter on the sides, and, and a lot lighter on the belly. Um, but what about when you go, so if you're doing a black and white jig, you're going to start with black. You're going to get the black down, then you're going to put your white on because, you know, you're imitating a shad or a minnow with a dark back and, and, and light sides. But what if we get in a situation where we're using two secondary colors? Like red is red and blue is blue. But when we combine colors together, uh, like what we're going to do here, which is we're going to use uh, fluorescent chartreuse green and a nice uh, orange, deep orange, uh, uh, burnt orange, or whatever you want to call that, a fire orange, uh, which I love. I love a little darker shade in orange. So these two are secondary. So they're really, you know, is, is this brighter than this or what have you? But since a bluegill's orange is on his belly, it makes sense for us to take and start. So we're going to use sort of a pattern logic. We're going to use sort of a, hey, this is the critter I'm trying to imitate. We're going to use that sort of logic. Well, if I bump that camera one more time, I'm about to quit. We're going to do some pattern logic and go with the green first. And remember, we want our material no bigger than the length of the, of the jig hook so that's about as long as I want it and feel free to tie it shorter if you want but I wouldn't go a whole lot longer and I'm going to come all the way down here to the point now see me tug 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 now this is waxed 210 denier flat wax thread so it's not going to want to come undone but you can always put a safety hitch in there keep that thread from losing tension and springing back on you now the thing about it is is now you can't unwind you can only go back to your safety point now you know that's the flip side so you know are you living dangerously well you know you're living safely and dangerously at the same time I suppose but throwing that safety hit you now I'm gonna throw that on there throw that nice piece of orange on there and I use blood quill um, I get it from Nimrods is the supplier I use mostly now uh, his name's DJ Kelly he has a shop on eBay He's a super cool guy I met him on original hand tied crappie jig so if you want a Facebook group that's relatively troll free and super nice people super talented people but also a great place for beginners because these super talented people like Angel Blair, Ruben Flores, uh, 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 Zach Church, these are all great people that will say, hey, you know, that's a good looking jig, but did you think of this? Or you ask them, you know, is this or that good? You'll have all kinds of experienced tires chiming in with kindness and sincerity uh, to help you get better at your jig tying and answer qu questions about supplies. And we had lots of people asking about supplies, and so many were recommending DJ Kelly at Nimrods that uh, I switched over to Nimrods because my one the supplier I was using kind of a jerk. Um, and I'm not going to talk about him anymore because I don't want to give him any advertising. All right, so we're going to come back up to the top just like we do on an eighth ounce jig because you know me. I like my chubby body jigs and I like them to have a nice meaty fat body so I'm going to go up and back and that will help hold that bead where I want it now you know I got this five yards of chenille it was in a bag and I just cut a piece of card stock and made me a card for it because um, it's a lot easier to work off a card than it is to work off a loose ball of chenille in a bag so tie it this way you know lay the chenille going this way okay we're gonna lay the chenille going this way and then we're gonna go down and we're gonna come back okay and we're gonna get right in here so now now we got that chenille really down in there I'm keeping I'm pulling pulling you can see that 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 whole jig bobbing up and down because I'm pulling that pulling it and I get back here I'm gonna double it up okay and once you get this one wrap or two right through here, now here's where I grab it and give it a good tug and really pull that down. Because if you don't, your chenille will just start sliding off the back or do all kinds of evil things. And 
boy, it's your last jig, and it's the one that's really wailing on them, and next thing you know, it's coming apart, and you're pulling strings off your shirt, and some thread off your shirt to try and fix it, and it's just, it's raining, and you're miserable, and you're not catching as many fish as you think you can because you didn't pull on that chenille. <laughs> but seriously, you'd be a lot happier. You, you get that chenille on there good, babe. You get it on there, okay? And then we're going to just take a couple turns of thread, knock it down and get it down into place, and then we'll come in and we'll cut it. All right, and then we're going to put the finish on her with the swip finish right in here like this. Okay, and then I'm going to tug that down. And it's basically going to disappear in there. And then, now actually, you know, I don't do this all the time, but I do recommend it for people who are starting out. Um, like I say, a lot of my guys that tie professionally, my good friend Kim Burnett at Crappie Stopper Jigs and Flies and all kinds of people, they're tying, you know, 100 jigs an evening. And he's like, I don't have time to put glue on everything and my knots are great and I don't need to do it and I'm like more power to you Kim but I tell the people that watch me to go ahead and do this because you know just a couple more turns and you put a little of that cement in there you got a jig that'll hold up for 100 200 fish maybe you know but anyway there you go there you go and that is a bead bod jig made with a little pony bead with a little crow bead or whatever you want to call these beads here that you can get almost anywhere and it's not only fun to make and fun to fish with it works it has good fishing logic behind it uh, because it lowers and slows the descent besides giving you a nice shiny color contrast spot in there uh, bead body jig let's go test it in the tank thanks for watching folks Okay, so here we are. We've got our bead jig over here and a standard over here. Now, you're not going to see a huge difference in the drop rates on these two. Okay, and let me show you a little something. You see that jig, the chartreuse head with the regular jig. You see how I got my knot in a crappy spot? Excuse my language, but that knot, especially if you're dead sticking, is not where you want it. And you every now and then you want to check your knot, you want to move it, tighten it down good and tight so that your jig, your dead sticking and so on, you want your jig as horizontal as you can get it. Um, especially for bigger fish. It, it's actually okay if it cants downward a little bit. Uh, that's certainly a lot better than canting upward. Okay, so now we've got them both. Nice, nice horizontal presentation. And there they are, two good looking jigs. Now we're going to bring them up here. Make them nice and even. See, and they hit the bottom pretty much at the same time. But you can hear there's just a slight buoyancy to the bead head. Not much, but doesn't that look good? And you're saying, well, I can make a bicolor body on a jig just by using two different colors chenille and of course you can but you you see that that's got that bead has got a reflective quality and it has a really cool shape on the profile and while they're both good looking jigs there's just something a little different about a bead bod and you can see it, it's so there you go bead bod jig regular jig Go get some trout, go get some crappies, go catch a black bass, go catch a white bass. Just go out and get your fishing done and enjoy a new type of tying and a new type of decorating your jigs with a bead bod. And thank you for watching. All right, everybody, thanks for hanging into this part of the video. Those of you that are curious as where the heck is crappie hippie been? Well, I've been right here. Uh, I've been quarantined during the pandemic. I get to sneak out and fish with a couple of guys, but by and every now and then, but by and large, I've been stuck here on the farm 
um, I, you know, doing my thing, uh, mainly developing glasswater angling, which is our company that makes lead-free fishing tackle, non-lead fishing tackle. And it's a dream we've been pursuing since 2015. We really got amped up and serious about it, come along about 2018. And now here in 2020, we're making more sales than ever before. We're not getting rich, but at least we're starting to move product. Uh, but the main thing is through consultation with different mentors and different business advisors, I've taken myself from just being a real creative fisher that likes to diddle around with tackle to an actual businessman with a business model and trying to achieve uh, a comprehensive company that can supply lead-free products all the way from the micro fisher to the big river cat fisher up to the salt life angler. So. You know, in our business model, Glasswater is eventually going to have 10 to 20,000 items, maybe more. Uh, but not being a wealthy person, not having wealthy friends, and not being connected in any way with any real wealth. And it just being me, um, I've had to build this one step at a time. And it keeps me really, really busy. But YouTube is part of that. And I appreciate everybody hanging in and sticking with me. Um, one of the things I did this summer, I did a lot of One Million Cups presentations because uh, One Million Cups is a thing where you go talk to groups of businessmen, you tell them about your company, you tell them about your ideas, and then you get advice on how to pursue your goals. And these have been very productive for me. And I used to drive to different cities, uh, Kathy and I would, and do the presentations live. But during the pandemic, they started switching over to do them over Zoom. And that made it real convenient for me to just sign up uh, for at several cities and then get to talk to different crowds of business people uh, in Manhattan, Kansas, uh, Des Moines, Iowa, uh, Tulsa, Oklahoma, Albuquerque, New Mexico. Um, I hope I feel like I'm forgetting somebody. But anyway, so I did a Zoom tour. I learned a lot. I, I'm, I'm moving right along with that. But, you know, that was, you know, I had to redo my presentation and and um, uh, developing contacts and, and keeping in touch with people takes a lot of time. Um, one of the most interesting people that I got put uh, together with was John Storm, who worked for Storm Lures. That was his dad and his uncle's lure company. And I don't know how familiar you all with Storm Lures, but the Thin Fin, the Hot and Tot, oh, they had a lot of great work lures. They're out of Norman, Oklahoma. And then they put their company up for sale, and Rapala actually bought it. And Rapala makes the Arashi Minnow and all these other things under the Storm brand. Um really cool and a really cool guy and he gave me a lot of ideas and he set out my roadmap for you know how I'm going to get from basically the small company I have now to the big company I am envisioning but he helped me break it down into manageable pieces so if you go to my website glasswaterangling.com uh, we've built up quite a few products uh, but we've got a lot more to go um, so, you know, I'm always looking at that and I'm also looking at marketing and, and trying to get sales up and trying to figure out what kind of advertising and what kind of things I need to do to, to boost sales. Uh, I've got to do all that boring stuff, the accounting, the profit and loss, um, stuff like that, uh, advertising concepts. I have an advertising mentor, a marketing mentor that I got from the uh, Senior Corps of Retired Executives. It's called SCORE. And I don't care if you're starting whatever kind of business you're starting, whether it's a lure company or a gas station, you need to get a SCORE advisor because these folks can really help you out. Um, one of the big time eaters that hit me over the summer was uh, my web person, my website person flaked out on me and disappeared. And with her gone, I had to do the website all over by myself. So that website you see there is entirely my work. Uh, very time consuming, especially since, you know, it's another thing I've just had to learn to do. Um, so the website took up a lot of my time. Um, but developing glass water is my main occupation. Uh, but I've managed, you know, I've tied a lot of jigs. I've filled a lot of orders. We've been having a lot of fun with it. Uh, but it hasn't left me a lot of time to get with you guys, and that's kind of a gut wrench. Um, also, I'm still involved with the Fish Nerds podcast. Uh, I have a regular feature on there now with outdoor writer Tim Beat called Lure Love. And if you want to catch some of those, uh, episode 262, uh, 265, 267, and 269, all have different lure love features. We talk about well, one we're talking about topwater frogs. We talk about spoons. Talk about lure kits. 
Um, and then we did a tribute to Ron Lindner when he uh, passed away. So they're all pretty good segments. And of course, I still do the long form interviews on Fish Nerds from time to time. One of my favorites is in episode 258, where I interviewed this guy, him and his friends saw a body floating down the Trinity River in Texas. And they threw out and hooked it and recovered the body and called the cops. And then they recovered the body. And these guys were, you know, local here. It was a great story. But if you're wanting to get over to Fish Nerds and check out some of my work, uh, it's a great podcast. I'm really proud to be part of it. Uh, you want to hear a long, good long-form interview with a really cool dude, uh, CeeLo, uh, the hooker. That's his Instagram handle. Uh, he's an he's a alligator gar and big catfish guy. Loves that river fishing. Uh, check out 258. Uh, but fish nurse keeps me pretty busy. And then, you know, praise be, but my wife's business took off big time in the pandemic. And she is a professional picker. And I don't know if you've ever seen that show, American Pickers, but, you know, just like Mike Wolf, uh, maybe not up on his level yet, but all of a sudden she is everywhere doing everything, going through old barns, uh, meeting people here and there, buying all this different stuff and, and reselling it. And I've been really proud of her, and I've been doing all I can to help her because she needs my help sometimes. By and large, she runs it by herself. But if it's a, a contact that she might, you know, be a little concerned about, she has me go with her. Or if it's a item that she can't handle uh, by herself, like a pie cabinet or something, you know, because of its size, I go with her. I help her get it in, in her on top of our Kia Soul, and. Uh, we get it, get it to her one of her booths there at the Antique Mall, Sentimental Journeys Antique Mall in Olathe, Kansas, and um, we take care of her, and she takes care of her customers. Um, another thing that I got to do this summer that was really great, and I had to prepare for it, and it took me quite a while, is I took fishing education classes because I want to be a certified Kansas fishing instructor, and Fishing's Future, which is an organization out of Texas run by Shane Wilson, uh, they work with the Kansas fishing game to do fishing education. So I took their basic education course and now I've got my certificate of training and all I got to do now is do a couple seminars with uh, my buddy Kim Burnett at Crappie Stopper Jigs and Flies. Uh, he is a certified advanced instructor so once we've done a couple of seminars together then I can start off and start doing my own fishing classes and getting out and meeting people and helping families learn how to fish, helping them to recreate in the fishing world responsibly, and so on and so forth. So I've been a busy, busy beaver, but I'm telling you, YouTube is part of what I'm doing. I love it. It has nothing to do with, uh, do I like this or that better? It's just, you know, you do one job, and then you do another, and you do what comes up. And, of course, I live out here on a rural property, so I've got mowing and tree cutting and brush things cutting and I love to work on my pond and manage my pond, the test pond where I test my lures and put brush piles in it and enhance the cover around it. And I'm always up to something, guys and girls. I just, you know, I just like to stay busy. But don't get your feelings hurt because I haven't put out a lot of content because my plan for 2021 is to get at least a video out every month. One of my mentors said, look, just make a schedule do your show topics in advance, blah, 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 blah. You don't need to know how the sausage is made. You just want it to go be able to get it when you want it. Well, I promise I'm going to do my level best to get you at least one jig video a month or something related to lure, something related to jig tying. In the meantime, I hope you enjoyed today's video. I hope you enjoy the videos that are to come. And there's a catalog of several videos that you can check out if, if this is your first time around. Uh, I've got several videos there. Thank you, everybody, for your support. This is John King, the crappie hippie, saying tight lines and valentines. Peace out. Uh -huh.